did you know that 3D models have vertices and edges and faces? You probably knew that. But those vertices don't just hold data on where they are in space. They also actually hold color data. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, because that's actually very, very usable. So if we uh, go into wireframe mode here, you will remember we made this thing, which is like a very, very dense cube with a lot of vertices. All of these single points in space have some color data as well. So let's take a look at how we can use that. Let's make a new material, and I'm going to call this uh, vertex colors, because that is what we call those things. And we can just use the vertex color node. This is just a node that has a RGB output for the vertex colors and individual outputs for the RGB and A. It doesn't just have RGB, it also has an alpha value. So each individual point in space on your mesh actually has four values for you to use in your shader to do really anything you want with, right? We can just put this into the base color if we wanted to. And that way we can literally, if we make this material on this cube, for instance, we can start literally just painting those colors on. And the way we can do that is going into our modes here, and we can go into mesh painting mode. And if we go over to paint, we can set our paint color, and you will now see that I'll be able to paint in uh, those colors on this material, because it is showing the vertex colors. If I swap around to material again, uh, you will notice that this doesn't do all that much because this material isn't set up to show the vertex colors, the one we just made is. Let's make the saturation a little bit higher on this though, so we can actually like properly see things. And I should also uh, point out that this is not giving colors on a per pixel basis. This is giving colors on a per vertex basis. So if we have a lower poly model, like these walls, for instance, I don't think that these are particularly high poly count. Uh, if we make these, that material, and we go back into our mesh painting, you'll see now we have these two sets to this purple color, and it smoothly interpolates that to the color of the next vertex that it can find. So if we set these vertex uh, or, or vertices somewhere over here, oh, it's all the way on the other side. For instance, to uh, this red color, it now interpolates uh, between those. The only things that we can actually give the color values to are the vertices themselves. So that is a limitation of vertex colors. They are colors for vertices, which means that they are limited in the resolution of your mesh. But this doesn't seem all that useful, right? This seems like, okay, why do I care about being able to paint colors like this? That Why wouldn't I just do that in a texture? And... The answer is, uh, for this purpose, you definitely would do it in a texture. There is the upside of this having infinite resolution in like pixel space, because it's done based on the uh, vertices. So even if I come really, really close by, you're not going to see like any banding. Well, you will, because you do, probably. <laughs> uh, but if you do this in your own Unreal Engine, you're not going to see any bending or pixelation in the color here. This is going to be a very smooth gradient, which is potentially a upside. But again, this is not really something that you use for colors. Usually you use this for like more arbitrary data and things like looping uh, between texture maps and stuff like that. Let's use it for uh, that purpose instead. So what we'll do is we'll create two parameters here. And this will be uh, color one. And then this parameter will be color two. And let's by default set color one to being blue and color 2 to being uh, yellow. If we then lerp between these, and the alpha for that lerp is going to be our red color channel, and that's going to go into the base color. We'll now see that suddenly everything is yellow, except the things that have a little bit of red in them. But you will notice that we are trying to paint on, and it doesn't do anything. And that is because this thing is already yellow. And if we go back into our material, uh, yellow means uh, a value of 1. So the entirety of this object already has vertex paints of 1, which is just like white across the board, applied to it. So there you want to use the erase color instead. So we just set that to black. And then what you can actually do is you can set it to only affect the red channel, as we want right now, or the green channel, or the blue channel, or the alpha channel, or a combination of channels. And then holding shift and uh, painting will uh, 
apply the erase color. So now we can make this uh, like little blue spot that we have here. And just like any painting, uh, we can do like we can set the strength a little bit higher. So it's a little bit more aggressive, more fall off or less fall off. So no fall off at all will make a very harsh line, which especially since this is vertex based, you probably don't want that. We have a size for the brush as well to really paint in like large areas at once. And we've got a number of different uh, views here. So we have RGB view, which just shows you the vertex colors, the alpha uh, channel, uh, the red channel, and well, all the channels individually. We can see going through here. Uh, I personally just like usually uh, painting in like just simply what the material outputs. And you can probably see how this would be useful, right? Because right now we're just to demonstrate this, like lurping between two colors. But you can very much do this with two textures. So if we do that instead uh, of doing two colors, we make two texture sample modes. I'm not going to set these two parameters. You probably should uh, in a realistic scenario, but we're not going to. Uh, the first one will be a grassy ground. And then this, hopefully we have like dirt. There we go. That'll be good enough for this example. So now we can see that we have a Minecraft block, more or less. And going back into mesh painting mode, uh, we can now say, hey, we want to have uh, this be maybe a little bit smaller. Uh, a grass over here. Uh, and then we want to have the sand over here. So we probably actually want that the other way around now that I think about it. So... Uh, we hold shift and we can use uh, some keys on the keyboard as well the uh, bracket keys to make our size a little bit larger so let's make all of this uh, grassy just like that and now make this a little bit smaller again and we can like paint in a little bit of a sandy dirt path with it just being one material and now we have a grassy material that we can apply throughout the entire game and on a per mesh basis we can decide hey we want a dirt path going this way or this way instead of having to bake that all down into separate unique textures which would be hundreds upon hundreds of textures that we would need instead of just using the vertex data to loop between the two and you can go real crazy with this right this is a very rough example of what we can do but in other examples what you can do is like in a wood material you can have two sets of texture maps one for the outside of the wood and one for like the inside and you can start like painting in some damage again do be aware that you are limited by the mesh resolution the amount of vertices that your mesh has so if you have a very low poly mesh vertex painting isn't going to work too well uh, as well as if your mesh is nanite enabled, it's also not going to allow you to vertex paint on it because the uh, vertices on the nanite meshes are constantly being regenerated and streamed from the disk. It doesn't really work with the more traditional way we usually think of geometry. Uh, one last thing that I want to point out is we have LOD model painting. LODs, hopefully you're aware, level of details the further away something is for your camera the lower poly version of it you can render uh, usually when you're painting on this it will just kind of like guesstimate how to apply those to lower lod's if you have a object with multiple lod's you can if you want to also uh, paint those in individually depending on the lod level it's a lot more work but it will be a slightly better result then again the point of lod's is that they only are used when things are far away from the camera so it's most of the time, not that. So that is vertex painting uh, for you and vertex colors. Of course, we can do more than just lurping as well. Uh, we can just use like the green channel for the roughness. And now everything uh, on this thing will be very rough, meaning very non-reflective. But if we go back into mesh paint mode and I say, hey, paint. And instead, we want to uh, deal with the green channel. Probably should set this to white, actually. I can then start painting on this and that will influence the reflectivity. So if we want to have like uh, spots of the grass being a little bit more shiny because maybe it's just rained, it's kind of hard to see uh, on these textures. But uh, right around here, you can see there's a little bit more uh, reflectivity going and then I can paint over that again and so on and so forth. So you can use this in a variety of different ways. You've got four channels to really do whatever you want with in your shader.
And for the full course, if you're watching this in the future, it should be all up on the YouTube channel already. But if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded, there will be a link down below in the description to the Patreon where you can find the full course. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 